specifically for the driving around the northeast. Um, I went up on a long dirt road between, um, you know, north of Labrina. You go up through a sort of a, a farming area, then you go up onto a, over a crest, and you're in quite a thick sort of area of forest up there. And there's a little bit of forestry, but there's a bit of old growth forest. Yeah. Now, I was coming from the other direction, from the Bridport side, up the hill, and I saw something running, uh, and I thought, that's a devil, you know, because I've seen plenty of devils at night time, the way it sort of runs fast, zigzaggy. But then I noticed it had, I only, because I didn't get a great sighting, I just, all I saw was the hind quarter, fast running, and then it ran up a steep embankment side on, and all I saw then was, the, again, the back tail, which was straight, stuck out like a roux. Okay, but it was definitely running on all fours. Running on all fours, and I saw plenty of, I've seen, you know, thousands of wallabies and roos, and, you know, the gate's entirely different. Sure. This thing was running on all fours, and it took off, and then I and they took a photo indistinct of what looked like a paw mark in the ground. It was, you know, about the size of the palm of your hand. You can send so, that to me, can you? As a I'll shot? send it to you. I'll send it to you. I'll, I'll send it to you, but I was left thinking 50-50. I didn't see the... The back or the head or the stripes. I just saw the gait and the tail. So what, it wasn't did a, you catch a colour? Was it not good enough lighting? Tan, or? You know, like a dirty brown tan colour. Okay, cool. Interesting. That's all, that's all I really saw. It was so fast, Neil. I think it was disturbed by my the vehicle approaching. Yep. Uh, it was probably there on the track, and then it ran up this very steep embankment. And uh, what I was surprised by was how fast it was, and then the initial movement... I thought, okay, I'm seeing a devil, but it's daytime. That's a bit unusual. But I saw the tail, and like, that's not a devil, and it's the wrong colour. What time of day? Um, it's probably about uh, 7 p.m., 7:30. Okay. Uh, which yesterday was still like another hour and a bit half of sunlight. So I went back and down that track a couple more times, and also in the dark, and I didn't see anything. Fair enough. Um, oh, that's I'll, good. I'll put you on to Ian now because he's got some much more remarkable. Um, sightings from that. Excellent. No just, worries. Just, just bear with me. I'll just put him on. Good um, on you, mate. Just sorry, Neil. Just just a sec. Are, are you free to talk to Neil Waters? How are you, mate? Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? No, I can. I'll go outside. Just hang on. All right, mate. No worries. That's better. I can hear out here better. Yeah, no worries, buddy. That's all good. Yeah. So you were interested in the solar scene too? Yeah, mate. Yeah, I've been chasing them around for about ten years now. Oh well, I've been a bit longer than that. <laughs> I've been since 1978. I saw them. Excellent. Let's hear it. Where were you? Yeah, in the central area. Oh yeah. Between between Ross and Scamander. Yep. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I had a physical encounter with a male. A physical encounter? What happened? I was trying to stalk a stag, and I was crawling across the ground, and I crawled across the den, I was asleep. It flew out and hit me in the chest. Oh, it came out of a lair, did it? Yeah, it was asleep. Yeah, right. You startled it. Yeah. But that's how I came to know that I was still alive. I didn't know what the hell I was to start with. Okay. What time of day was it? It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so you had a good look at it then? Oh yeah, I followed it for quite a while. I could have shot it three times. Oh wow, I hung around then. But uh, I, I just wouldn't shoot, you know. I had first pressure on the rifle and the scope. But I just wouldn't shoot to kill something. Sure. Not something you're not going to eat. Yeah. Listen, uh, you, you know... Um, Andrew, uh, Orchard, don't you? I do, mate. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, okay. No, I, I thought you know him. Well with him. Yeah, I haven't seen him for over a year now, but um, last time I spoke to him was about a year ago, just before Christmas. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah, he was a bit yeah. crook, I heard. He told me he yeah, had a bit, of, a bit of trouble. Yeah, I'll get your details anyhow. Yeah, and no we worries. We've got a later on and now when it's quieter. Oh, well, that, that's all right, mate. You can talk now if you want, but it's up to you, yeah? Yeah, I've, got, I've got, actually got your phone number 
and you're already. Oh, all right, no worries. Well, you can give me a ring anytime. I work in the fire tower up on Mount Horror. Okay. So I'm up here all day during the day. Um, every day except Monday to Wednesday, yeah. I have those days off. But um, you're near the pub. okay, you, I understand. You can call me any any time, mate. Right all right. Okay. All right. Good on you. I'll see you Tuesday, Neil. You'll okay. see. Cheers. No, no. Sorry, sorry. Talking to, talking to the other chap. Um, you there, Neil? Yeah, mate. No worries. Yeah, sorry. He, uh, I, I, uh, we, we just had a bit of a, a get together, so he was taking off. Oh, okay. So I, I just thought I'd opportunize and um, introduce this chap to you because he's seen two cubs as well together. In um, uh, a different encounter. Yeah, the same area a few years later. Okay, um, cool. Again, uh, again, he was planning to. Yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell. I'll let him tell you the whole story. But um, yeah, and there's another lady who is a farmer who uh, seems to be very shy about it. But she um, was walking with her dogs in '87 around the Western Tiers. Oh yeah. Um, and the dogs started getting really nervous and whining and getting the heckles. She was actually looking for a sheep. Yeah. As a farmer going down a game trail and then she saw this thing coming straight towards her and it, it, it like uh, she said it, it had deep eyes you know small ears and it just walked straight. it actually brushed her against the leg and she saw the long straight back and the straight tail and the stripes and um the dogs were totally freaked out um so, so basically ran said, straight past her and bumped into her on the way yeah well, it was just walking slowly it, it didn't it acted like she didn't exist is basically what she said yeah, that's often the case. They're a pretty conf confident animal, I think. Yeah, I think I think it's just on its it's well, like it's obviously hunting something. Yeah, and it's not it's interested passing. in being distracted. And, and it's like it's not going to get distracted by something on the side, you know. And, and the second that was eighty seven. The second encounter she had was about two thousand and five. Um, sorry, actually, she's had three encounters, but she saw one 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 where Ian, who you just spoke to, she saw one run across the road in the seventies there. The second sighting was 87 Western Tears. The third sighting was 2005, also Western Tears, a different area apparently. At four in the morning, she's lifting a gate. Um, and this uh, <clears throat> coming across the uh, vegetation on the side of the road up to the gate, the uh, animal comes into the light of her headlights. Right. And she can see its face and its head and its, you know, its front quarter, just looking at her. Um, and just sort of stands there for a while, watching her, and then just walks back into the bush. Um, and so her impression was they're not actually afraid of people. Um, and then, uh, so that's, that's the second person. The third person, um, I know, seen one run across the road in uh, uh, near Mole Creek. Yeah. And they said a second one in, uh, again, early 2000s on the beach just south of Port Arthur, oh, sorry, um, Arthur River uh, on the west coast. Yep, I know that area. I've been there. Yeah, so it just came out onto the beach about 200 metres away from him. Yeah. Uh, and, and he looked at it, and it's like it must have got a scent of him or something, and it went back into the bush. It was, you know, very early morning was his description. But he's, he's a chap I think who might be interested in, might be open to doing an interview. Um, and then the fourth one I met was um, a this lady who had two uh, into two sightings that she hadn't seen, but uh, one was her brother who saw two together on the shore of Lake Burberry when he was fishing there. They were on the on the edge of the water there late in the you know dusk yep um that was 2018 um very recent yep um uh, and then she said in 2010 a friend of theirs photo snapped a photograph of one which she's seen and she said it's unmistakable but he doesn't want it publicized and this was he owns a chef down at um near Mayenna. oh yeah uh, yep on the other side of great lake Yep. You know, so apparently there's a bit of thick bush up there where his shack is, and that's where he saw one. And yeah. Had, apparent, and apparently snapped the photograph, but again, he's only shown it to very close friends and, and sure. so forth. 
because um, I think I think understandably there's an element of people who know that they're out there but don't want to. They feel that publicity is not a good thing. So I guess you, you respect that. Well, I do and I don't. I mean, it's passive aggressive conservation, isn't it? Well, yeah, but in the end, if you, if you don't, it's this sort of idea. If you just leave them alone, they'll be fine. But when an animal's critically endangered, you sort of wonder whether it's actually better to know about it so you can stop logging or whatever else is going on in that area. Nothing, you know? nothing will stop logging in Tasmania, mate. They could find Jesus in the bush and they'd still bulldoze it. Like <laughs> seriously, I, I'm not worried, and, and I don't think they. They know that as well, forestries, but they they just don't want any problems, I suppose. But um, yeah. those contracts are written in concrete, you know, for those timber quotas. Yeah, well, it just, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yesterday, I went to the camera shop here in Launceston just to get a, a bit of um, yeah, minor equipment, and I'm just getting chatting to the guy that I'm into wildlife and like taking pictures of things, and he's like, oh, "Have you seen any Tasmanian tigers?" I'm like, "Well, not yet," <laughs> you know. This is actually before I had that one encounter I told you about. Um, and he said, well, my dad saw one in the early 2000s around Bridport. Yeah, well, that's not surprising either because they crossed the road, that Bridport to Georgetown Road. There's a few spots that are reasonably well known with locals where they actually cross the road regularly. So I looked at Google Maps, you know, in the forest cover in that region. It looks pretty broken up, though. Like, do you think, ironically, that's actually good for them now, that they actually prefer a bit of... Broken like the country, country where, the, where, where there's wallabies that can come and prey on at night, and then they retreat to the bush in the day. Or what do you what do you think? Yeah, they they do lots of weird things. They, I mean, nature often breaks the rules that we put there for it. So they're often seen at dawn and dusk, and, and then they're often seen between ten and midnight. Um, but then you'll get sightings at eleven in the morning, you know, and one in the afternoon. So who's to say they're going to? perform in any way but they definitely do love the coast um all around australia not just tassie they're seen within 10 k's of the coast often um, yeah maybe that maybe that tea tree climate's ideal it is, is. they love the tea there. tree thickets they love all of those wetlands what the black fellas in western australia call them swamp dogs well ian i don't want to steal his thunder because he'll tell you his story but he said that the two cubs he saw were, were their kind of nest was under a tea tree. Yeah. They were, you said dogs yap, these guys yip. And they yeah. were making this very loud yipping noise to each other, sitting on their hind quarters, facing each other. Yep. Um, and um, They'll probably call on their mother, because he yeah, was so there. When he, when he told the property owners back in the um, late 70s what he'd seen, because he thought they were extinct and he thought it was some weird mutant dog he'd say, you know, he, um they, the old couple get into this heated argument among each other. Then the old guy grabs him by the scruff of the neck and says, don't tell anyone we've got them here on our property. And um, then the lady tells him how she'd gone down in the riverbed and inadvertently got between the cubs and the mother. And the mother had sort of, you know, snarled in her and bared its teeth yeah. to back out of there. Yeah. Um, so, I, I think these stories are amazing, really. Yeah, look, and there, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them all over Australia that, that match up with the same sort of descriptions. It doesn't matter where they are, they they nearly always describe the same things. So, I don't have any real reason evidence, to doubt um, that these video, people. That video you got of a, uh, you just see like a, the front of a face, like a muzzle, and you can just see the eye or something and it disappears. Um, I don't know, I don't know if you, you 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 know the one I'm talking about. No, I don't. Just the muzzle. No, or, or the face. It's just like half the face. You just see a muzzle and like an eye and a nose. I thought that was from yours. From oh your yeah, I had one shot that was a. I think it was one, but it was so close to the camera that you couldn't. All you could see basically was the eye. Well, you can sort of see the eye and the, a bit of the nose. Though. A, a little bit, but. Just the base of the muzzle, yeah. But, but actually, I thought, well, what, what the hell else could that be? It didn't look like a quoll or a devil. But I got bagged out for that photo too. I just put it up there and said, this looks interesting, and people were giving no. me a hard time about that. It's like... I, well, what the hell else 
else could it be? I hear Tasmania. You know, well, like it, that. it's like that thing in 2022 with the backward facing pouch and the long straight tail and four legs. Yeah. What else could it yeah. be? It's not a yeah, wombat. And have you seen Andrew Orchard's photos as well? Yeah, I've published them on our website once oh, on our okay. YouTube. Yeah, no, that just particularly that one. He's got a rear rear end of it and a tail. Yeah, uh, you can see the the hip with the hind quarter, and you're like, what the hell else could that? be? And you can you see know? the face of the baby next to it in the grass. Yeah, it's just, yeah. you know, it's... he's actually seen it. He's seen heaps. Like he's seen about ten or something. He said. Yeah, um, he's seen him a few times. He's in our doco right at the end, talking about his experiences. Yeah, yeah. He's, um, You've seen about three, haven't you, Neil? I've seen five. Oh, wow. What Last, you, what, Have you seen that thermal vision I got earlier this year? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was way too big to be a quoll. Yeah, it's, it's, and, it's and towering it over that bracken fern. That bracken fern's 300 mil high. It's towering over it. Did you, um, like, have you seen them all in Tassie in the northeast, or have you seen them on the mainland? I've been barked at one on the mainland, and I've heard them yipping twice on the mainland. But you've only seen them in Tassie? Yeah. 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 <coughs> so do you think there's still, um, like, where do you think the stronghold left in Tassie is? Do you think it's the northeast, or do you think there's... I don't think there's um, any one stronghold. I think they're in all their former country, really, because the really? sightings keep appearing all over the state. So, they're just very thin on the ground, aren't they? And they, they, they have very strong sense of smell. So are they thin on the ground? Are they? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> are, are they, were they endangered? Were there that few left that interbreeding was going to be a problem for them in the future? Well, obviously not because they're still here. I mean, That's if, it. If they, That's you know, it. If, they, if that had been the issue, then they would have gone extinct already. But, yeah. Of course, and this is the same with the mainland. They've always been on the mainland, but spread out over a much, much bigger area. Yeah. But, you um, know, the, the newspaper archives are full of reports of them on the mainland and thylacoleos. Yeah. Well, I know, because I, know, uh, I live in Melbourne, actually. I come down here for work once a month. But um, I know four different people who've seen them in, in Gippsland coastal area. Yeah. There, there's, uh, personally, four different people. There's you know? hundreds of sightings in Gippsland. That's just Gippsland. Yeah, like well, Wilson's Promontory, well, Cape Lip Trap, that whole... So they, again, as you say, they seem to love the coast, don't they? They do. They love tea tree thickets. They love the coast. Um, and they love mountains and deserts. They love swamps. They love open woodland. They love farmland. They don't mind coming into the urban fringe on the edge of cities. The other one the interesting is that, you know, that actual um, semi-decomposed uh, one they found in a cave in... Mundrabilla specimen, yeah. Some of that, the, the, that date they've assigned to it of 3,000 or whatever years old has been called into question. Uh, I read a pretty good analysis that it would have completely degraded if, if it was that old. Yeah, it's all, so, it's it's all spin, more mate. Likely a, more likely a fresh death, you know. Like, it was a uh, fresh death. Athel yeah. Douglas, who excavated the site, who exhumed it once they discovered it, the cavers discovered it, the museum went and had a look. They said, all right, we'll go back and get some gear. They went back, they came back in two weeks or whatever it was before when they first went there and got back there. It wasn't very long. It had decomposed heaps more. Yeah, well, that, that shows So that, 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 it that clearly that wasn't 3,000 years old. It's all bullshit. Yeah. That sounds total bullshit then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's absolute yeah. spin. And then there was another one found in South Australia on the Nullarbor uh, a year or two later, and that also looked really good, in very good condition. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's a narrative at best, and it's a very poorly narrated narrative because there's a lot of contradictions in it. And the, yeah. the extinction paper, when you read the paper that this thing was classed as extinct from... It's just one yeah. man's opinion. It's not even a scientific document. No, I mean, how can you? How can they? I mean, the Addo elephant went extinct for twenty years until they rediscovered it in, like, an elephant. You know, yeah, in a pretty small forest in Africa. Uh, you know, that's <laughs> that just shows you how the whole thing is just someone's opinion. Exactly. Um, but that that area where I where I had that sighting yesterday does that seem like a, a plausible area to find one? Um, yeah, absolutely. There was a guy who had some audio that he gave me last year. He's seen one in um, one of the vineyards just up that area. Yeah, Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill Vineyard. He's seen one during the day there. 
Yeah, it was quite a big um, area of forest. Yeah. And uh, and the way it ran, it was like because I've done a lot of night drives looking for wildlife here, and the way it ran, I thought this is a devil, you know. Just yeah, because it's got that really, peculiar really gait. Fast and running on all fours, you know. Yeah. This sort of uh, irregular gait and a zigzagging, but I didn't. It was so you know, it was kind of over the crest of the hill and obscured by a bit of vegetation. So As you came over, it, yeah. Get a clear. I think it was running because I was coming up there in the car. And it just ran straight up the embankment. You know, wallabies don't do that. Um, yeah, well, and, and it didn't run, it didn't, you know, hop like a wallaby, it ran. Yeah. But I saw the long straight tail and I thought, hang on, that's not a devil, you know, and it was a, like a dirty brown sort of, sort of colour. A bait of mine's got a farm out near Piper's Brook, which is just up the road from where you're talking well, that's, about. Yeah, that's actually where I started at Piper's Brook and I came down from there. Yeah. yeah. Well, he had a fire on his property two years ago and about 10 days after the fire, a thylacine came through. Wow. And we, we, he found bang on thylacine prints and he got his kelp and he put its print in the mud next to it, basically, and cast them both. And the difference in the prints is phenomenal. It's so obviously not a dog's print, you know? No. And that's the only yeah. dog on the property, his dog. But, you know, we, we all know they're there. Blind Freddy knows they're there. But clearly the scientific fraternity has an agenda with the technology that they're trying to develop to pretend they're cloning this thing. And that's where the money is, yeah? Yeah. So yeah. That's, and also forestry is the other thing, isn't it? You know, well, it's convenient know. for forestries because they don't get disturbed if it stays extinct. Nothing will stop forestries in this state. I don't know what they're nervous about. It's ridiculous. I mean, just come yeah. clean, ban 1080, and you can get on with it, really. That's all they've got to do. Well, it was on 1080, I know that this farmer, that the one that uh, saw them up close, this old lady, she um, that's grew up in um, somewhere near Connerville, I think, which is up in, like, central sort of highlands area, yep. uh, past the Western Tiers, and... She said that they were forced to use 1080. So some guy would come out from the government and uh, they put all the, they dig ditches and put a whole lot of apples and carrots and stuff in there. Yeah. So everything would come and eat them. And then on the last day, they'd mix the poison in with it. Yeah. And they'd come out the next day and there were just dead bodies everywhere. Yeah. Dead, every, and she said everything. It's uh, horrific. Birds, eagles. It's horrific. Birds. It's horrific. And, and, and she said there were hundreds of deer that they killed. And, and, uh, and then someone from on one of these Facebook pages to do with Tasmanian naturalists or whatever, uh, I, I wrote this story and they're like, oh, that's bullshit, 1080 doesn't do that, you know? <laughs> I, I, know, I, know, I know what she said, you know, I, I know she's not a liar. Um, <laughs> 1080 you know, doesn't do that. Yeah, right, oh, you ostrich. <laughs> yeah, couldn't have been good for... Um, couldn't have been good for predators, though. It's not know? good for anything in the environment because it's very persistent. It doesn't break down and go away in a hurry. And because yeah. of that... Um, it's like Roundup, basically. Everyone thought that was innocent. Now they're finding it causes cancer. Well, lo and behold, yeah. Look, look, most yeah. things in life cause cancer. The air we breathe is causing cancer these days. But yeah, ser much. seriously... Um, 1080 is so toxic, it should be... I mean, it's the only country in the world that you can use it is Australia and New Zealand. What's that tell you? What have they banned? And they banned it in uh, the USA back in the 50s. Yeah. So where's the dumping ground for everything that they banned in America? Yeah, we're the long-term experiment. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. That You nailed it in one, one sentence there. We are the long-term experiment. So yeah. good luck. All right. Yeah, no, good to chat, Neil. We'll... we'll um... Uh, I've got to pick up a friend now, so I'm sorry I've got to go, but we, we, it'd be good to catch up with you sometime. And yeah, I'll give you a few weeks' notice, but I'm back down in Feb, um, so I'm here every month for a week. So yeah, Look, if you're in Scottsdale, I can catch up with you for a cuppa, you know, after oh, five yeah. if it's a work day or something. Oh, it'd be just good to catch up for a yarn even. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, but I'll, I'll, um, if, um, I'll we'll catch up with you and have dinner with you in Scottsdale at the pub or something if you want. It's yeah, yeah. So I'll get uh, Ian, uh, you got Ian's number or? No, he's got mine, he said. He's going to give me a ring, so. Okay. See how you All go. Right. Maybe remind him if he forgets or something. If he doesn't call you, let me know, all right? All right, mate. Uh, no worries. Yeah, okay. All right, cheers now. All right, have a good day. Thanks for your call. You too, mate. Yeah, thanks for your hard work. Bye. Ta-da.